Grammar 7. The zero, first, second, and third conditionals. Have a look at these sentences. Which one would concern you the most? A. If Frank jumps out the window. B. If Frank jumped out the window. Or C. If Frank had jumped out the window. You probably said A. And why is this? Because in order from A to C, the sentences go from likely to unlikely to impossible. And the reason for this is because in English we have married present verb forms to fact and high probability, past forms to lower likelihood or possibility. The type of conditional chosen expresses the attitude of the speaker. If the speaker thinks it is likely, they will use verbs in the present, if Frank jumps. If they think it is unlikely, they will choose past forms, so if Frank jumped or if Frank had jumped. The less likely the situation, the further into the past it is expressed. So the zero conditional is used to express general truths and are for when the time being referred to is now or always. The situation is real and possible, which is why we use in both clauses the most immediate tense there is, the present simple. You can usually replace the word if with when without a change of meaning. The first conditional is used to refer to the present or future where the situation is real. The first conditional refers to a possible condition and its probable result. In these sentences, the if clause is in the present simple and the main clause is in the future simple and is used to talk about possibilities in the present or in the future. Let's look at an example of a first conditional sentence. If I have enough money, I will buy a new phone. So the meaning behind this statement is, right now, I don't know if I have enough money or not, but it's possible. I'll check, and if I do, I'll buy a new phone. So what CCQs could you ask? And what are the answers you're expecting? Pause the video and do this with your partner or group now. So here are some CCQs you could ask to see if your learners have understood the concept that you will buy a new phone on the condition that you have enough money. Do I have enough money? I don't know, maybe. Do I want a new phone? Yes. Is it likely or possible I will buy a new phone? Yes, but only if you have enough money. Here's another one. If I see Mary, I'll tell her about the party. Discuss the meaning and possible CCQs for this sentence with your peers or group. Pause the video and do this now. The meaning behind this statement is, I don't know if I'll see Mary, but it's possible. If I do, I'll tell her about the party. So, possible CCQs? Will I see Mary? Possibly. Will I tell her about the party? Yes, but only if you see her. The second conditional is used to refer to conditionals that are unlikely or unreal in the present or future and are not based on fact. The second conditional refers to a hypothetical condition and its probable result. In these sentences, the if clause is in the past simple, and the main clause uses would plus the main verb. It's worth noting here that similar to the first conditional, which uses the present simple in the if clause 
but talks about a future time. In the second conditional, we use the past simple, but are also referring to a future time, only that it is about an outcome that is less likely. Note that this simple past form is slightly different from usual in the case of the verb be. Whatever the subject, the verb form is were, not was. If I were rich, I'd buy a big house, as opposed to if I was rich, I'd buy a big house. Let's look at some CCQs we can formulate with second conditional sentences. With your partner or group, look at these two sentences and come up with their meanings and use these to form your CCQs. Pause the video and do this now. And here is the meaning behind the statement. If I had enough money, I would buy a new phone. I would like to buy a new phone, but I don't have enough money right now, so I can't. CCQs. Do I want to buy a new phone? Yes. Am I able to? No. Why not? You don't have enough money. Is it possible that one day in the future I could buy a new phone? Yes. We might ask that last one just to show that when we say the statement, it is not impossible. But it's not possible now, and is probably not that likely in the near future. Hence the use of a past verb form to show a lower likelihood of this condition that could produce this outcome. If she didn't spend so much money on clothes, she'd be able to fly home for Christmas. Meaning, she spends a lot of money on clothes, so she doesn't have enough to fly home for Christmas. CCQs? Can she fly home for Christmas? No. Why not? She doesn't have enough money. Why doesn't she have enough money? Because she spends so much money on clothes. The third conditional is used to refer to a time that is in the past to talk about unreal situations in the past. The facts they are based on are the opposite of what is expressed. So for example, the sentence, if I had been born in Mexico, means that in reality, I had not been born in Mexico. The third conditional is used to refer to an unreal past condition and its probable past result. In third conditional sentences, the if clause uses the past perfect simple, and the main clause uses would plus have plus the past participle. Let's look at some CCQs we can formulate with third conditional sentences. With your partner or group, look at these three sentences and come up with their meanings and use these to form your CCQs. Pause the video and do this now. Here are the answers. Compare them to what you came up with. In the main clause of conditional sentences, we normally use will or would. What modals can be used instead to make the outcome less certain? Let's take one of the sentences that you'll look at on your task sheet. If she passes the test, she'll apply for the job. Will apply sounds pretty definite. What modals could you replace it with to change the level of certainty in that statement? So you could say, if she passes the test, she may apply for the job, or she could apply for the job, or she might apply for the job, all of which sound less definite than will. Now, having looked at these conditionals in some detail, look at your task sheet and complete questions 1, 2, 3, and 4. These will review your understanding of each conditional's meaning and form and give you a bit more practice on formulating CCQs.
So, if you were to teach one of the conditionals in a grammar lesson, part of that lesson would involve, we hope, pronunciation. And it would be good to focus on sentence stress and weak forms that appear in connected speech when we use the conditionals. Consider the contractions we'd naturally use and which words we'd stress, and by default, which ones would not be stressed. This can be incorporated in your drilling by clapping on the stressed words and parts of words as shown on this slide here. If Mary'd had some money, she might have bought the dress. And you can see underneath each word, which is stressed by the clap symbol. Another thing for your learners to note when using conditionals is their use of punctuation. Let them work this out inductively by showing them conditionals where sometimes the if clause is first and some where it's second and asking them how they're different. Conditional sentences express a number of different uses and functions. What functions do you think the following express? Pause the video and do this with your partner or group now. If I hadn't been so impatient, he would have agreed. The function here is regret. If you do that again, I'll scream is a warning. If you smoked less, you'd feel better. Advice. If you add water to acid, it explodes. So this could be either a fact or a warning. Now have a look at question five on your task sheet which looks at first and second conditional sentences. First, identify which conditional each sentence is, and then choose which function each sentence represents from the choices provided in the box. Check with your peers to see if you came up with the same answers. Now have a go at trying to familiarize yourself with the different conditionals by coming up with your own examples and then working with your peers to test each other. Work individually initially. For question six on the task sheet, write a zero, first, second and third conditional sentence. Think of a different context for each conditional, i.e. do not use the same sentence content for all conditionals. This will get you thinking about the different possible functions that conditionals can be used for. Choose one to read out to your group. Your peers will tell you which conditional it is. Pause the video and do this now. The following slides should give you some ideas as to activities, games and different ways of teaching conditionals. Conditional chains are a great warm-up exercise, and you can also expand them if you want. Think of weird scenarios to catch your student's interest from the get-go. Have one student say a condition and a result. Then have the next student take the result from the previous student's sentence and make a new condition from it, along with a new result. For example, the teacher starts with, if pigs could fly. Student A says, if pigs could fly, they would make nests in trees. Student B, if pigs made nests in trees, the birds would get angry. Student C, if the birds got angry, etc, etc. For guess the condition, give students 10 or more conditions and have them verbally complete the results for each, or vice versa. Do this out of order so their partner doesn't know the conditional that's being completed. Again, making strange or funny scenarios helps keep their interest. Then the students' partners have to guess which condition the others are completing. And here are some other ways you can teach conditionals in your class. You can read through these in detail in your own time, 
but activities include raising your learner's awareness of conditionals, doing matching exercises, conducting student surveys, creating wish lists, making requests using conditionals, writing advice columns, writing journal entries about their plans and dreams for the future, discussing probabilities, or using music and songs. And here are some ideas for using videos to teach or review the conditionals. And here are a couple of song ideas you can utilise, but this is by no means an extensive list. You may know a few others you can add. So to sum up, in this input we've looked at the different conditionals, zero, first, second and third, the form or the grammatical structure, and use or function for each type. And we've reviewed how in English we marry present verb forms to fact and high probability, and past forms to lower likelihood or possibility. We've also looked at the different functions of conditionals, regret, threat, criticism, advice, etc., the actual meanings of some conditional utterances, and how we can use these to formulate CCQs for our learners. This input has also covered some activities and different ways of teaching conditionals and provided some video and song resources. Moving forward, conditionals will be covered in your LA exam, so ensure you are familiar with the form and use of each conditional. Would you be able to identify which one is being used, zero, first, second or third, by looking at its structure? Could you formulate suitable CCQs for a given conditional sentence? Could you identify the function that it exemplifies? For the next OT, and also for your own reference, ensure you do the following. Organize your notes to highlight the new theories, concepts and terms you've learned. Prepare any questions and comments that you want to raise in the OT. And make a note of any insights you want to share. Thanks for watching and see you at the next OT.